And when we think about these products, there's a, there's a baseline, there's a base minimum that before companies and, um, and, and individuals get into our side of things, it should be understood and obviously assessed scientifically to confirm this, that the products we're talking about are going to be less risky to our bodies, right? From a health standpoint. Um, and so that's kind of just, that's the starting line, right? Um, what then transpires from there is, is to me and, and to us and our team, honestly, the most beautiful part because we're already going to make the underlying assumption with the evidence companies supplied us that it's gonna be less harmful for an individual. Um, but whether or not that individual starts using the product, continues using the product, likes the product, is satisfied with the experience, that is what needs to happen in order for a product to truly be worthwhile, in, in my opinion, to be on the market. Because otherwise you have now a, a new product, um, you know, containing tobacco or nicotine, whatever, it's certainly not, not harmful, right? And so it needs to be a threshold to say, consumers are gonna enjoy it, consumers are going to use it, it's going to be a part of their journey and it's gonna be part of their life. And fundamental to that, um, obviously that's their behavior, but fundamental underlying that are two aspects that we don't see, right? Behavior we see, it is overt um, and we can view it. What we don't see um, are, are affect, um, the affect and cognition. So the affect are our feelings. It is how we feel at a specific point in time that fluctuates throughout the day, throughout the hour. That those feelings, whether or not it's being generated by uh, your family, your work, your environment, your commute to, to, to work, um, or feelings towards a marketing material, packaging, labeling, the look of a product, that mostly occurs sometimes with it's within not our unconscious but our subconscious and we aren't even aware that we have a natural affinity to have positive and or negative responses to um, uh, to a specific stimulus or a specific environment and so how we feel is going to be foundational to what we see in behavior coupled with our cognitions which are our thoughts and our thoughts are obviously um, part of our consciousness and so those are uh, it's how we, you know, how we think and how we process our lives around us. And so the way, way a person is feeling at a specific point in time, the, that feeling then is leading to their thoughts, right? Um, and then we see behavior. And so there's a whole lot that happens underneath that is not seen that underlines that behavior, which is why the FDA has put out um, here in the States to have t uh, TBPI studies, tobacco product perceptions and intention studies, because they know the way consumers, specifically smokers, well, and non-users, will perceive the risk of a product and whether or not they have some kind of appeal or affinity or intention to try and use that product can be related then to actual behavior. Um, and again, I still go back to the fact that um, these behavioral-based studies um, should fundamentally be a part of every application or every authorization of a product on the market because you can have the, made the best product that a company believes is on the market, but if the consumers aren't using it, maybe it's too early, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's too late, uh, but if they're not using it, they're not using it to go to, to switch off of cigarettes, you know, what have we done?